So I recently watched a video from a channel called Built, where he attempted to make a photo frame from scratch. It's a great video and I actually got in contact with Tom and well, I'll let him explain. A viewer of the channel named Fahim got in touch the other day and amongst other things, we were talking about the photo frame video and he said he wanted to have a crack at designing his own. He asked me for the dimensions of the photo that I was working with and I just got done putting it up. What a legend. I really wanted to have a go at making a photo frame myself. I love a design challenge. This is where I ended up and what I sent over to Tom. The back panel slides off. The photo is then inserted. And then this back panel slides on and clicks in. There was a whole process of trial and error from getting the measurements to sending Tom the final file. That's what I wanted to go over in this video, breaking down each decision made along the prototyping journey. Hopefully it's something that is helpful if you are currently in the design process, or if not, at least a bit interesting. I'm gonna use a Sharpie, so hopefully it's visible on camera. I apologize for the lighting. I'm literally using one of my pendant lights just on my desk. So it all starts off as a sketch and with 3D printing, you really want as few components as possible with the least amount of moving parts with no uh, requirement for you to assemble if possible. So no magnets or screws or gluing. Of course, it's not possible with every design, but if you can design without those, it does just make the entire process or at least the end process um, a lot easier. There is a lot more work at the start. So with the photo frame, I just wanted it to be two pieces, a the frame and then the back piece. And the way it was going to work is, let me try to sketch this out. It is quite hard sketching behind the camera. Um, so just two pieces, the frame, and then the back piece that will slide out, allow you to insert the photo and then slide back in. Looking at this from a side profile, original concept was something like this. This section being the front of the frame, so the photo can be seen from here. This would be the back and it would slide in. These little lips would stop the back panel from falling out and also give it something, a, a rail basically to slide into. The issue with this design for 3D printing is the fact that it does have these overhangs. Now this can be printed, but you would need to have some kind of support material in that area, which you would then need to remove, which isn't impossible, but it is just more work. And it also just increases the risk of fail prints. You could potentially print this in different orientation, um, however, I'll explain a little bit later why I didn't choose to do that. So a 3D printer cannot print directly onto nothing, but it can print at an angle. Um, more than 45, but I chose 45 just to be safe because I know that my printer can print that quite reliably. So changing this into something that can be printed without any support material simply became something like this and then the other piece would slot in like that. This would be printed face down. So this would be the bed, which would then mean the front surface of the frame would have a, a textured look since I, I do have a textured uh, plate. Something else I really wanted for this design and I thought it'd be a bit of a fun design challenge is to have some kind of snap or latch um, system that would hold this all together when closed. Something that is also print in place. So I wouldn't have to attach anything or glue anything. So the original idea for this was to just have essentially a little nub in the back piece that would then fit onto um, a little recess in the frame. 
which most likely would have worked. However, it would have meant that the frame would have to flex every time uh, the back panel was taken on and off, which most likely would have been fine. But I wanted to have a go at making a latch that had a bit more movement into it, which is why I ended up going with a design that allowed uh, a bit more flex. Something like this, where this whole piece can bend in and out to allow that um, movement. This is also another reason why it had to be printed flat. With the latch system facing down like this, then as the printer does layers, it will go down across and this will all be one layer going again and again to build it up and then of course building upwards which means that as this flexes back and forth over and over again it's flexing every single layer it's all one solid piece whereas if I were to print it with the orientation going straight up to allow this kind of overhang shape it would mean that this piece would end up very rough drawing, uh, being printed with the layer lines going this way, which just means that as this flexes over time, eventually one of these layers, most likely by here, will separate and then this whole thing will become useless. So this was the first test print. I didn't print out the uh, entire frame because I just wanted to test out the latch. And that's also another tip if you are doing prototypes, don't print out the entire thing if you don't need to. Um, you can add a negative space in your slicer and just print out the area that's needed. It does uh, fit in quite nice. The actual latch system was quite weak, but I wasn't sure if that was my measurements or just the fact that this front section was so, I'm sure you can see that on camera, was so thin that the entire thing could just be flexed to allow the latch to pop out. So I couldn't actually tell if this was enough tension just in this test print, but at least I knew that it would fit. It also gave me a first look at that textured um, surface on the front, which I really liked, along with the general idea of this sizing. So this was the second test print. I printed out a full scale of that same model. Doing this, I realized a couple of mistakes I've made. So firstly, that front section is definitely too slim. It actually allows the entire thing to flex quite a bit. The latch system also wasn't quite aligned as good as it could be um, so it didn't snap in quite right trying to get that on camera it was just a few mil off i added a little notch for a nail but i centered that with the back piece however the back piece doesn't sit in the center of the entire frame so that nail hole is actually slightly off I added these holes to reduce the weight of the back panel. Uh, this is a mistake. It's a mistake I've made before and I thought I would remember. You would assume that adding a bunch of holes would reduce the weight of the final part. However, with 3D printing, it really depends on the situation. For a piece this thin, adding a bunch of holes actually makes the problem a bit worse because every one of these holes now has walls to build them up. So that's a bunch more walls. And because they are so close, these centerpieces are almost solid. It is very strong, but it's not what I needed. This actually took longer to print and weighs more than if it was just completely solid with say a 10% infill. Something else I realized was there wasn't really an easy way to grab onto this to remove the back. I just kind of had to stick my finger in one of these gaps, which wasn't very comfortable. This is the final, sorry, this isn't the final model. This is the third model. 
The adjustments I made to this compared to the last, firstly, um, it's much thicker on the front. So if I remove this, you can hopefully see the thickness there. So there's no longer that uh, large amount of flex. It's a lot more solid. The latch system was adjusted to make everything fit much better. And hopefully you can hear a really satisfying click. got rid of the holes and instead added a section here for you to grip onto to remove the back panel. The inside of this is uh, rounded over so it's nice to hold as well. Two points to hang the photo up. This one is just a just a hole. Um, that is to hang it in a portrait orientation. The hole is just straight through the material however on the side where the nail will be hanging from it is um, chamfered the reason for that is to allow it to actually grip onto a nail if you think about uh, say this is the material if you just have a hole then a nail uh, is just going to have to balance on the inside wall. Whereas if you add a chamfer to that hole, it actually gives something for that nail to hook onto. So it can't fall off. Did the same for the landscape orientation. The reason this is so wide is because when I was marking out where the hole would be, I realized there's a lot more material on this side than there was on this side. So I wasn't sure where the balance point was. Instead of going into the effort of working out where that was, I just made it extra wide. So no matter where it is, it'll be somewhere in this region. I've also added a little bit of uh, knurling just on the inside there. I'm not sure if you can hear that just to give the uh, nail something to grip onto so it doesn't slide. And then instead of the holes to reduce the weight, I drew out a rectangle that is perfectly centered in the entire frame. I then drew uh, around every hole and then set an offset of those sketches by a couple of mil and then embossed that shape down into the material to reduce um, material in areas that it wasn't needed. This is only a few mil thick, you can actually see through it. This will reduce weight a lot better than just having a bunch of holes through it that then need walls. In terms of improvements, the photo really needs something to sit into because it's currently just sandwiched between the two layers, which works fine. However, with a bit of pressure, you can actually just slide the photo right out which of course isn't the best. Unlikely that's going to be a problem since the friction should hold it in, but it is something I would improve if I were to make another version of this. The one I sent to Tom is actually a little bit different. It's essentially the same, except I've rounded over a couple of more of these corners um, just to make it look a little bit nicer. But overall, I'm really happy with this final product. It was a really fun uh, little design challenge and I'm definitely gonna do more of these. If you found this uh, video interesting or there was anything in the video that you found uh, helpful, uh, please let me know in the comments. One last thing before you go, I just wanna quickly mention, I've just set up a Patreon. It's completely free and every video I post going forward will be uploaded one day earlier on my Patreon. If that is something you're interested in, then check out the link in the description. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching.